All right, uh, I want to call today's uh, meeting of the uh, Conservation, Sustainability, and Green Initiatives uh, Committee to order. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, the large crowd. Uh, hope you're not disappointed with how the meeting proceeds, but um, I want to uh, first just go over the uh, review of the previous minutes and see if anybody has any uh, comments or concerns about the minutes. Proceeds, but um, I want to uh, first just go over. I'd like to work with Dale if he does remember you because he's going to have like severe separation anxiety. Uh, I didn't hear that. It was, uh, it's okay, Bill. All right. Um, so what was that? Was that somebody trying to get on or what was that? Was that a problem with the minutes? No, 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 no. It was, uh, somebody had some background noise. Oh, oh, all right. Uh, okay. If, if, uh, if there's no, no concerns about the minutes, is there a, a motion to approve the minutes as, as written? No moved. Second. 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 Uh, if, uh, if anybody, when, when you vote, please raise your hand. So, um, the, the count, we can have a count. All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. Uh, Barraro, was that an opposition? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Barraro, be a little faster with your hand there. Okay. Uh, all right. Now the, the next thing I wanted to do was, uh, Unless anyone objects, I'd like to let uh, Laura go next on the uh, the agricultural district districts uh, measure. So this is for a public hearing on the proposed modifications to the agricultural districts numbers one, two, and three. Uh, Laura, do you, would you like to proceed? Sure. Uh, in accordance with New York State Ag and Markets Law pertaining to the county's annual review process for inclusions in the agricultural districts. A uh, public hearing needs to be set to receive comment on the proposed additions. Uh, recent guidance from New York State Ag and Markets uh, suggested that a remote public hearing and comment would meet the intent of the law. All right, do, do, uh, does anyone have any questions? Uh, I did have. Was that a yes? Yeah, that was me, Bill, sorry. <laughs> I had a question about it um, in regards to the resolution on there. Is that that was from last year's? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there'll be an updated one for the new one. Should we? Right, should yeah, that we was just it? an example to uh, to show the normal procedure for the. Gotcha. All right. If I have a yeah. question. Go ahead. Chairman. Uh, I didn't see anywhere wh when the public hearing will be. That's what this is for to set the public hearing. But what is the date? So, uh, Mr. Set by the legislature. Yeah, Mr. Bergdorf, it'll be June 23rd. Okay, is that in any of the materials that we got? Uh, nope, this is uh, traditional practice. As you know, we've, uh, <laughs> this is one of the regular ones, uh, Paul, we get every year around this, well, not necessarily around this time, but we get it uh, usually every year or so. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, just traditional practice, we set it when a request comes in, we set the public hearing to the next immediate. Uh, date we have public hearings. I, I understand that, but we've uh, but we've canceled the number of public hearings because of limitations on gathering and the like. Sure. Uh, what's going to be different on June twenty third? Uh, you know, I think uh, and Pat, I don't know. Uh, the I, uh, yeah, sure. Want to jump in on this, but we're working out uh, some of the options. And Pat, I'm going to turn that over to you then. So. Uh, Obviously, uh, a gathering in person is still not op not the best possible option, but we have this technology that we're using right now. We have the ability to bring the public into this technology. Uh, other municipalities throughout the state have been successful in doing uh, Zoom meetings with the public either appearing uh, physically as you all are, or virtually, I guess, or uh, you guys can't see it, but right now there's a phone line attached to this. Uh, I'm using it as a redundancy to allow um, those who don't have Zoom or, or access to YouTube to access this meeting, hearing the audio. Uh, through the Zoom meetings, we can accept phone calls as well. The public will be able to meaningfully participate in a public hearing uh, run virtually or remotely, I should say.
okay. Um, I would think you'd have to, we need to move forward on public hearings um, and who knows when it's gonna be. Uh, so I'd be in favor of that. You know, this is a very uh, controversial issue and we need to give both sides the opportunity to properly represent themselves. To do so on a Zoom conference, this is really a temporary means for us to, to take care of government business. But if we're to do this properly, I think we really need to be able to have both sides present in a public setting so everyone can be heard. And a meeting like this will obviously last a long time. There'll be a number of people that will show up, but it's, it's just not, this is not the best vehicle for conducting any type of a public hearing. Are you talking about the ag districts? Oh, I'm sorry. I was on the wrong one. Well, oh, but it's no. still, it's the same concept. It's, it is uh, the same concept. But you have to have public hearings eventually. I mean, if you want to just keep putting them off, okay, I guess you can. But... May I? Who was that? Lynn? Lynn. Yeah. Well, I would just say that I have watched the uh, public uh, hearings of the cities and it, it can be done and people do get to have discourse, but we at our public hearings don't have any discourse. We're not allowed to ask questions. We're not allowed to ask anything beyond clarification. So it's not as onerous as having a conversation, having a public hearing. I think that'd be a lot easier than when we'll have to have a you know, discourse online. But I just thought I'd share that. No, it's my mistake. I, was, uh, I jumped ahead of the gun here. I was looking at something else um, and also had a little work email come through. So no, on, on something like this, this is this is a very simple public hearing, but I agree with Paul. Just the manner of, of uh, conducting public hearings on Zoom um, is just not not going to be, I think, um, the, the best vehicle for uh, for the public really to get their their point across. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to interject something here. I think the it depends. I mean, the process is not perfect. Um, I do think that the um, the public hearing for something like the Clean Air Bill is going to be more complicated than many public hearings that we have. But I think whatever the process is, uh, we need to reach uh, closure as to whether or not it's one that is going to work and meets the guidelines. Um, so I, I want to ask, I guess, Patrick and or Kevin to comment on that. Is that something that are we comfortable that uh, we are at a place where we can have the public hearing and for whatever measure and, and be satisfied that we're in compliance with all the proper uh, state requirements? Bill, Bill, what I can just say, and I'll echo Pat's comments earlier on, you know, there have been numerous jurisdictions throughout the state since the COVID began uh, that are holding uh, quite successfully, I'd say, public hearings in compliance with state law uh, in terms of how we have to do it in this, uh, this new order, keeping, keeping socially distant. Uh, I can say that they've done it with, again, pretty good success if you watch uh, I recently watched uh, Ithaca's. Uh, Ithaca had uh, four-hour public hearings on bond resolutions and some other matters, and uh, basically it can be done, as Pat said, pretty effectively through a combination of using video, phone, conference, and uh, to some extent written messaging. You cover all three grounds. You hit all three uh, avenues of uh, discourse from the public, and I think it's, again, it's been pretty successful. So I, I don't mean to echo whoever said it, but I think uh, I think it was Mr. Cleary said we need to get back to uh, holding public hearings, which is correct. Other municipalities are doing it, and it can be done uh, successfully. I just want to add something to that too. Uh, I think we are in the twenty first. Can you can you all hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. I think we are in the twenty first century, and this uh, pandemic is not something that any one of us or anybody prepared for. But in this century, uh, people can operate remotely and people can, can operate virtually. And that is why we have millions of people who are currently working from home right now and they are work doing just fine. So I think we can, there is no reason why we cannot uh, operate completely as a legislature and serve the people and we don't have to put anything, we don't have to push anything further and we, we just have to attack it as it comes. Uh, this is a pandemic 
that we didn't necessarily prepare for, but I think we can handle it. And I think people can actually uh, come here and say what they want to say, and we can hear them just like we can hear every one of you right now. So I don't think there's any reason why we should push this and not have a, be able to have a visual public hearing. Mr. Chairman, if I may, just. Uh, who was that? Uh, it's Vicky. Um, my other thought is that we might actually get more participants if we have the right, um, you know, outreach to the community that people who are not likely to drive into downtown Albany might actually tar partake. Um, so I, I, you know, I hope we will get back to public hearings as quickly and efficiently as possible and do the best we can with the technology we have. You know, Vicky, that actually raises one, uh, one, one thought that, um, that I, that I had and, and, and I thought you were going to mention it, but you didn't quite mention it, but, um, that is, I have read from uh, another account, uh, and I can't remember what event I was at, but, but actually someone made the comment on the Zoom event that um, we were able to participate through Zoom and we couldn't have participated if we had to be there live. Yeah. Um, and, but, but w I guess we need to make sure that we are providing proper um, public outreach and, and awareness to people so that if they want to attend, uh, you know, through the technology they can, if they want to submit uh, written comments, what is our procedure for incorporating those into the, the mm, public hearing? True. Yeah. You know, whether it's whether it's read or just it's a document that, that we all see, you know, that the members of the legislature see. Uh, but yeah, I, I you know that that's all I have to say. Does anybody else have any other comments about? I have one more comment. Yeah. Um, By the way, let me ask this: when when uh, because there are a lot of faces on the screen here. Can you raise your hand so that <laughs> I can call on you? Because I'm hearing voices without seeing uh, who it is right away. Yeah, Mike, thank you. Um, you know, I, I think we should go through with public hearings. But <clears throat> if the legislature felt maybe we should try with one item the first month and see how it works, make sure everybody's comfortable with it, that's maybe something we could do. And, you know, have one item on the public hearing and, you know, it's, that's something that we're talking about. I mean, you know, they talk about everything, mm -hmm. um, but that would, that's just a thought. I, I think we can do it. Um, everybody else, not everybody else do it, but they're doing it. But if some people aren't comfortable and wanted to give it a try first, that could be something we could possibly do. Right, right. So, uh, Bill, it's back Mr. Reinhardt. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. I think uh, Joanne. Patricia, Joanne Cunningham and her hand up. Oh, Joanne, you. okay. Right. Thanks, thanks for recognizing me. I'm not an official member of the committee, but just participating in the day. I would just kind of underscore a couple of points. Um, I think nobody could have imagined that we would be here as we are now, two months ago or whatever. And I don't know about you, but my entire life has been moved to a virtual setting. and. You know, most of the people working who are, you know, engaging in in twelve hour day works or eight hour day works are doing it virtually. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't want to move our public hearings um, to a, a modality that people can participate in right now. We got to do the business that we have to do. We can't put it on hold yet. So I'm not sure why there's such a big discussion. Everything's going yeah. and perhaps we're going to see an increased level of participation and maybe even get different kinds of people to participate um, because we're going virtual. So I'm not, I don't understand what the... Yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Yeah. 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 Um, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but the motion on the table is about sending a hearing for this ags and markets issue, not on the appropriateness of the type of hearing that we have. To me, that should be something that's discussed with the full legislature on a June 8th meeting. And I'd like to move this vote on having this hearing for this uh, item. All right. Uh, is everyone fine with that? Or does somebody really have to say something else about the process? Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor of uh, this specific uh, motion? Aye. 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 All opposed? No opposition. OK. Uh, now let's move on to, uh, it's, it's item number two on the agenda. Uh, 
Now that is the uh, local law B. Uh, that's the law itself, not the public hearing. And uh, because we haven't yet had the public hearing, that uh, I will table that as a, one of the, as a sponsor, prime sponsor of the of the bill. Uh, the next item, and the last item, is uh, number three, and that is the uh, public hearing on the proposed local law B. Uh, and uh, all I will say is, uh, some of you are going to be really disappointed uh, because I am uh, going to table that as well. <laughs> Uh, so many of you are probably on this hall, call thinking we were going to have a robust discussion of, uh, of, of this law. Um, but I have, I've decided to table it for uh, a combination of reasons, uh, which I don't really need to go into now. I will be sharing it um, with members of the Democratic Caucus later. Uh, but that's, uh, that's, what's, that's what I'm choosing to do. And I will also discuss it with all the other co-sponsors. And I wanna say thank you to those of you who have joined this call because you have responded to my inquiry about being interested in co-sponsoring. Uh, so I will be filling in all of the co-sponsors, many co-sponsors um, when I get the chance. So that actually concludes the business of the committee. Uh, is unless there's any other business that people want to raise, uh, I think we should consider adjourning. Can I ask a question, Chairman? Yes, please do. I had my hand up before on the issue that was at hand, but it kept missing me there. I, I, I tried I, to call on you at one point. I, I thought that was you. <laughs> I just kind of have a question where I have concerns about the public hearings online too, but my, my question is more a technical one than maybe for um, Pat or Brandon or somebody, the computer people that know how I, I saw a, I was on a public hearing, not as an official, but witnessing one that turned into kind of a free for all. Um, how do you control the people that are calling in? I mean, does the, the, the host, can you control that? So people, not the legislators, because I know you can mute us, but can you control what the public is saying? You, not what they're saying, that they're not talking over each other or that. Right. So, um, Patty, yes. And if we weren't recorded, I'd say I'm failing at my job if I can't control that. But we are being recorded. I, I will be handling that along with, uh, right now, Kevin Brandon, myself, and Nicole Chambers, the clerk, all have the ability to mute any one of you. Uh, I think I'm the only one who cannot be muted right now because I'm the host of this meeting. Uh, we would be introducing members of the public. They would be in the meeting and muted, and we would give them the floor one at a time, okay. identical to how we do it in chamber. Okay. I would, how would people My sign own. up, Pat? And I, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Patty, you had the floor. Yeah. I just wanted to know that for my own thing, because I early on in this uh, the pandemic, there was some problems with meetings. And I know we're all learning, but, and I'm just for the record, I, I always think communication is better in person, but that's just me. <laughs> Chair, right. motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Uh, is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, folks, remember, we didn't get our hands up on that last one. <laughs> Yes, I did. Well, some of you did, but <laughs> maybe you're not all seeing everybody the way I am. But anyway, uh, thank you, you very much. Day? <laughs> and I, I appreciate uh, everyone, everyone coming to uh, attend a very short meeting today. <laughs> thank thank you. you.